Though they may not express it in these exact terms, many Christians are of the impression that prayer is a means of getting things from God, and if you pray, you get what you want, and if you don't pray, you don't get it. However, Scripture does not present prayer in this way. An accurate reading of the Bible shows that prayer is God's way of helping us understand, appreciate, and accept His will. It is a conversation between us and our Heavenly Father, whereby we come to know Him better. After all, there are plenty of verses that are often taken to mean that whatever we ask for, we should automatically get, like God is some sort of vending machine. But on the other hand, there are verses like James chapter 4 verse 3 that clearly teach that not all prayer is answered. This is not inconsistent, but it does show that prayer is often misunderstood. When Jesus prayed to his Father before Lazarus was raised from the dead, he made it clear that he knew ahead of time, with complete confidence and faith, that the Father would empower this miracle. But he offered the prayer for the sake of those who were listening. John chapter 11 verse 41 through 44. Ideally, this is what prayer should be. One offered in complete faith and confidence. Two offered as something which requests what is entirely God's will and understood ahead of time as such. Three offered as a response to God rather than as an effort to get God to respond. The reason why prayer promise verses trouble us, and at one point or another they trouble most Christians who read the Bible, is that they put the true issues of prayer in such stark relief that they magnify our inadequacy. That is if there is any imperfection or irresolution in our faith in prayer, and lack of faith hinders prayer. James 1, 6 and 7 If there is any aspect of our desire in prayer which is really known to us not to be in God's will, and selfishness hinders prayer. James 4, 3 If there is any impatience with God's timing or way of answering, and we cannot know all the cosmic facts compare the book of Job, then the straightforward promise of these verses and their like, all the places where God promises He will answer us, can easily cut us to the quick. Instead, the lesson we all should try to take from these promises is not that there is any deficiency in God, He cannot lie and His promises are always honoured, but if there is any deficiency, it is in ourselves. Once we accept this principle, then much of the problem of unanswered prayer disappears immediately. Jesus told us that if we had faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, we could tell the fig tree to plant itself in the sea and the mountain to move aside, and they would do so. Yet we do not see Jesus giving either of these commands. Why? Not because God would not answer, but because Jesus would never ask anything that was not in the will of God. Even though we know the will of God generally, and for our lives particularly better and better as we advance in the Christian life, there will always be things we do not know, and things occurring in the conflict beyond our eyes which we cannot see. Therefore there will always be times and circumstances, situations and difficulties for which, and about which we pray, wherein we cannot really say what God's will is, as far as the outcome is concerned. That does not mean that we cannot pray for a specific outcome, but that it is very important to have the proper mindset before offering any prayer. 1. God loves me and already knows what I need before I ask Him. He will take care of me, and will do so not because of my prayer but because of who He is. 2. I have complete confidence in Him and faith in Him to work everything out for me for what is truly His good, whether I can see clearly what that is or not. I know He will do that even irrespective of my prayers. 3. It is a privilege to be able to offer my requests to my Father directly. I know that doing so is for my good, for my edification, for my reassurance and encouragement rather than a mechanical means of producing something from God. I need to talk to Him. That is the way He made me. Prayer really is for our good in many ways. It reminds us of our loving Father's concern for us. It draws us closer to Him. It lets us unload our cares upon Him. It gives us a chance to share the load with our fellow believers and vice versa, to take up the load for whoever needs help. It lets us participate in this grand invisible struggle that glorifies God, and to do so in a wonderful and important way. And it makes clear to angels and men that we are trusting in God rather than in ourselves, that we are looking to Him for our solutions and not to the strength of our own flesh. Joining together with other believers to pray 
should not be an occasion to doubt about the value of individual prayer and is not at all about the mechanics of how to pray. Corporate prayer, where at least two are joined together, is rather an opportunity to show solidarity of faith, of care, of concern, and of unity in appreciating and looking to the grace of God in the accomplishment of His will. The better we pray, the more we pray, the more attuned we are to the will of God when we pray. The closer we are to God, the more of us who pray, Matthew chapter 18 verse 19, all of these things do indeed accentuate and accelerate prayer. This does not at all mean that prayer which may lack some or all of these accelerating attributes is ineffective or unwelcome. God hears everything we pray. The question really is, do we really hear what we are praying? Our Lord always responds to prayer. It is true that sometimes we have to wait for an answer. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, about whom Jesus said, Among those born of women there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, waited a very long time for his answer. We know this for in Luke chapter 1 verse 7, we are told they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years. We can safely assume that Zechariah and Elizabeth both began praying very soon after getting married, when no child was forthcoming. They might have waited ten years or longer, yet they did not waver in their faith as is clear from the Scripture's assessment of them. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. It takes quite a strong faith not only to continue to pray for something over so long a time, including, after it came to seem an impossible thing, but also to restrain oneself from blaming God. It would have been easy for this couple who were clearly good and godly, when they saw all their less than godly, and even their sinful neighbors being blessed with offspring, and themselves without child, to find fault with God, or at least to lose heart and stop walking as good people of God, or at the very least to stop praying. But Scripture tells us they remained godly, and they continued to pray. For as the angel Gabriel himself tells Zechariah, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Luke chapter 1 verse 13. And how marvelous an answer it was! For not only did God give them a son, He gave them the greatest of the Old Testament prophets outside of the Messiah Himself. Praise the Lord that He doesn't make us wait that long for the things we need here and now. But even if we have to wait longer than we would ever imagine, and even if we have to keep praying right through the point where it seems impossible that the help we need will ever come, let us not lose faith, let us not lose hope, let us not stop praying, but let us be confident instead that God will answer us as He has promised, in His own way and in His own time, and for our absolute and first best good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Don't worry about anything. But in everything let your requests be made known to God in prayer and in petition with thanksgiving. And the peace of God which surpasses every thought will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 1 Peter 3.12